Hi, welcome back to the Hicks Homestead YouTube channel. I know some of you guys have had some questions uh, about the Pecoron and the uh, MJ32 Cascade uh, or charging cable. I, I call it the the uh, DC bonding cable because it, it, it's not actually a data cable. Um, so this is the email I got from uh, Pecoron back on October 3rd when I asked the question um, about paralleling and connecting the battery groups together on the two uh, E3600 LFPs because on a 240 volt setup, sometimes one side of your panel on line one may have more of a load than line two. And that's just the nature of the beast when you have a house. Um, electricians do their best to try to balance the load through the whole panel, but you're going to sometimes have asymmetrical loads, especially um, if you're trying to minimize usage. For instance, in my case, I have a refrigerator that is 120 volts and it's on one circuit. It just so happens to be that my master bedroom, my washer machine, uh, my microwave, they're all on that same side of the bus in the panel. And there's some other loads that are spread out through the house that are on the other side of the bus. So your line one, line two, you take those two together, you get 240. So this is the, the first email I got. And they sent me uh, these pictures of how to take one of their cables and modify it. Right here you can see that there's data cables that are inside that would have to be clipped and modified. Well, the issue I have is that their setup, their cable is too short to actually cascade the panels without having some weird, or not panels, I'm sorry, the uh, power stations together to bond them DC to DC without having them in some weird sort of back-to-back -back arrangement to have that cord reach. Um, they did offer to send me a, a cable and I had asked the question, you know, hey, can I use my own cable and MJ32 connectors to make my, my, my setup? And the response I got back on October 10th was, uh, the engineer confirmed that the six AWG cable should be usable for the setup, but it's critical that the positive and negative polarities are not reversed during the connection. And if you reverse them during the connection, you will let the magic smoke out of your battery pack. Um, rest assured of that. Um, it says, additionally, please note, since this is not our official cable, which they don't make one, you have to get one of their cables and modify it. Um, they won't be able to take responsibility for any issues that may arise from its uh, use later. Um, we hope uh, understanding. Uh, alternatively, um, would you prefer to... Uh, for you to send us our official MJ32 cable, please advise that the cable's out of stock and I'd have to uh, wait for it to get replenished. And if they do send me their cable, which is out of stock, I would have to modify it myself. And their Cascade cable, they have a 42 or 47 inch Cascade cable, uh, which is probably long enough for the setup. Um, I responded back and I said, hey, look, um, the cable I made is working perfectly. I won't need you guys to send me a cable to modify. Uh, and my YouTube subscribers have been asking for you guys to, you know, are you going to make one? Um, one commenter wrote it. I, I need this cable too. Wish Pecoraw would make one for order. Uh, the cable does turn the uh, two e E3600s into a beast. And I agree. As far as a 240 volt setup for a house, this is probably the most cost effective option uh, that, that's currently on the market. It it does have its issues. There's a lot of people that have issues. But anyway, um, I'm going to shift gears and I'm going to show you how I made my cable. So I like exploded parts diagrams. So this is the cable here. And like I showed before, there are no data pins in these two holes here. So there'd be like three in that one and two in this one um, on the official cable. And you would have to take their cable apart and modify their cable to basically get what you can make yourself. So you have a positive and negative side, and it's very important that you make sure that you get this correct. Um, as you can see, the red goes to red, black goes to black, 
And on the unit itself, if you're facing the ports, the one on the right-hand side is positive and the one on the left-hand side, as you're looking at it, are negative. But use your, your, your voltmeter and test it to make sure that you don't wire this thing backwards. Because if you cross the red and black cables and plug them in, um, you're going to figure out really quick that that probably wasn't the best idea. So this is the body of it. This screws in. This is a, um, I guess, a water seal. And I got some heat shrink on there. That came with my setup. And then that's the nut to tighten it. Uh, the key is this, this area right here is designed for anything from 6 gauge to 8 gauge. And you should use a, a metal ferrule to make this connection. This connection is not really made to go directly on to uh, the cable itself. And these connectors, I believe, will handle up to 4 gauge. I have 6 on there because that was what was readily available that wasn't on back order. And this cable being 105C rated uh, should carry the uh, load up to 55 amps without a problem. I have never seen a load that high on the portable power station um, between batteries. And even though this is uh, roughly five feet long, the the voltage drop and the line loss at, at this gauge with the uh, low amount of amps that's actually going to pass through this, uh, the voltage drop is negligible. Um, you always want to make sure that when you do hook these up to your two power stations, they're already balanced. So your battery voltage, let's say if your battery voltage is 53.9 volts, make sure that both power stations are at 53.9 volts before plugging this in because there will be an uncontrolled transfer of power between the two stations. And I had thought about putting some sort of inline fuse or inline circuit breaker in here and it would have just added a, a bit of resistance to the circuit and it would have been a trip point. And I don't think it's necessary if you leave this cable completely plugged in. So if you like what you see, please uh, give me a like and a subscribe and uh, share this with anybody that you feel uh, wants to know about how to make this cable. It's pretty simple. If you got basic hand tools, that's all I used. Um, not a complicated setup. It's really easy to do yourself. But just beware that uh, Pecron may not honor a warranty issue that's caused by your own fabrication of this cable. Thanks for watching. Bye.